Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nitin Choda and welcome to Ignition Time. Thank you so much for being a viewer, for being a subscriber. And I'm going to do this video in one take for you guys. No editing, uh, nothing of any sort. And I'm going to immediately give you the status of the stimulus negotiations and where things stand right now. As I'm recording this, it is almost 3 p.m. East Coast time on a day that is going to be extremely consequential because if the Democrats bring their $2.2 trillion updated HEROES Act on the floor of the House for a vote, we will know that the negotiations between both sides have essentially broken down. I don't want this to happen. I don't want to report this. And I actually have to take a deep breath as I give you the latest status of the negotiations and where things stand right now. But before I do that, I have a little help. And I, uh, I, I do need to do this to get through the day. If you saw the debate, you'll know why I need this. You'll know why all of us need this. So I have to do this <laughs> while I get through the video with you guys. By the way, this is a, it's a very simple Roscaro. And uh, these guys, by the way, should send me 100 bottles of Roscaro. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just enjoy the wine. Okay, down to business. This is where things stand right now. The U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin at 1.10 p.m. East Coast time today uh, entered the office of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to present the, um, the relief plan, the counter proposal from the administration. Um, as soon as Secretary Mnuchin emerges, I'll let you know what he said. We can expect a statement from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi as well. So the big news, and I did report that earlier in a video today, is that uh, the U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said that his counter proposal would be similar to the Problem Solvers Caucus proposal, which means it'll be right in the $1.5 trillion range. I just want to be clear, this is something that House Speaker Pelosi had flatly rejected a few weeks ago, saying that it was inadequate. I also want to make it clear that uh, uh, Secretary Mnuchin did meet with the White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, on Tuesday afternoon, and he met with Mark Meadows today as well, as he was prepping the deal for Speaker Pelosi. And uh, just to be clear, the Democrats have long seen uh, uh, White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, as being a problem, as being an obstacle to a deal. And it is a known fact, this is a publicly known fact, this is not some, you know, some secret or anything, that the White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, does command a lot of respect by Republican lawmakers more than U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. And a lot of Republican lawmakers saw the U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin as too soft when dealing with the Democrats. So they wanted some sort of a counterbalance, which is why they inserted White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, who, you know, who... Uh, represents the, uh, the the GOP establishment and who represents uh, the president. So it's kind of unusual when you have uh, two negotiators who have uh, slightly different approaches uh, when dealing with someone like House Speaker Pelosi, who is a very, very, as far as we can tell, a very tough negotiator. So the situation uh, has more and more layers of complexity to it. In my opinion, more complexity than, than is needed. I mean, this is a simple situation, relatively simple. Uh, people who need help the most should get it. And um, so that's where we stand. So um, the pulse of Congress is something that the White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, has been uh, has been sort of keeping track of. And um, uh, just uh, once again, uh, Steven Mnuchin does not have the trust that uh, White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, has amongst lawmakers, specifically Republican lawmakers in the Capitol. There are many. Now, there are some interesting updates here. Politico reported that uh, the proposal from the U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin has an escalator clause which could bump the top line from $1.5 trillion all the way to $2 trillion. Now this, this, this is important because this, if it goes through, can be something that maybe, maybe Speaker Pelosi can get behind. We'll know, we'll know very soon. Guys, I need this. So, if, guys, you're watching the videos, put yourself in my shoes. I have to review the information, I have to process it. I don't just have to type it out or tweet it out because that's easy. You know, I have to, you know, be presentable. I have to be on my A game. I've got to film these videos in one shot. Uh, and then, you know, uh, so anyway, um, Mnuchin's offer has an escalator clause which could bump the top line up to $2 trillion. Will House Speaker Pelosi accept the escalator clause. That's number one. Number two, uh, House Speaker Pelosi has said that uh, or she did she did have a call with uh, Democrats this morning 
and she said the outstanding issues are still uh, state and local aid and liability reform. In other words, all the all the lawsuit protections that the Republicans want, and that's very important to them. And I just want to remind our viewers and subscribers that Democrats are at four hundred and thirty-six billion dollars on state and local funding. Republicans are at $150 billion. The Democrats were originally at $900 billion because that's what they had wanted in the original version of the HEROES Act. And House Speaker Pelosi did assure her, dem her members that if talks do break down, um, then uh, you know they would provide substantial relief next year uh, if, uh, if uh, Vice President Joe Biden becomes president. So this is what uh, House Speaker Pelosi told her her Democratic lawmakers and uh, she said I quote we will have our moment and if a deal does indeed come together uh, you know can Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell put something as big as that because remember the Senate uh, remember the Senate didn't want to do anything north of a trillion dollars that was the original Heels Act by the way when I say original Heels Act that was that that wasn't that long ago but it seems like a lifetime ago I mean gosh how 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 life has changed in the last few weeks and so it's not clear whether whether the Senate Majority Leader can actually get enough GOP lawmakers. Plus, he's not taking a lead in these talks. In fact, speaking of uh, speaking of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, he did tell uh, he did tell uh, some reporters in the past half an hour that I quote, "We are still very very far apart." So that that guys that sounds very ominous to me. That does not sound like good news. And uh, you know there are. Uh, the top line, which is, you know, hey, are we going to agree to a top line number of, uh, you know, $1.5 trillion? That's going to be a big, big, big deal. And so that is, uh, that is uh, you know, again, you know, this, this can't happen without the support of the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. So I'm hoping that we can see some sort of a consensus there. And uh, let me see what new news is coming in. As we speak, U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin is with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. It is now 3 p.m. East Coast time. So as we speak, the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is speaking with U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin. And uh, by the way, uh, on a side note, just so that my viewers and subscribers to know, uh, is in case you were wondering about last night's debate, uh, I can do a very detailed analysis of it. If you want me to, I did do a funny comedic analysis of it earlier. But if you want me to do an analysis, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of comments about President Trump's comments about uh, proud boys. And the president just said as he was leaving the White House, "I don't know who the proud boys are. Uh, whoever they are, they need to stand down." That's what the president just said. I just thought that that was uh, interesting, worth uh, worth uh, mentioning. Also, this was just reported by Jonathan Martin from the New York Times. Jonathan Martin is a national political correspondent for the New York Times, and he said that this is an illustration of the president not knowing his own strength. If he said people need the help, demanded that it be brought to the floor, then it would be brought to the floor. That would have some impact in the halls of Congress and more uh, to the point with their constituents. So in other words, the president should be making a bigger issue out of this according to this, according to this particular reporter. And uh, according to more recent reporting, like I said, this is from Alex Bolton, who's a staff writer for The Hill. According to Alex Bolton, uh, when, uh, when Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was asked about the relief bill, he said, I quote, we are very, very far apart. All this is coming to a head, guys. This is all going to come to a head in the next one to two hours. And, uh, you know, this is uh, quite, uh, quite an intense uh, situation. The Senate Majority Leader did say that the two sides are very, very far apart. And uh, Meadows is now no longer in the Capitol. The White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, is no longer in the Capitol. Uh, Stephen Mnuchin did speak with Mark Meadows earlier today, then spoke with US then spoke with the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And now, as we speak, is speaking with the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. And uh, this is something that Meadows said, White House Chief of Staff Meadows said, I quote, We don't need a deal today, but talks have been constructive. So that is uh, that is where things uh, are right now. And Mark Meadows, as he entered the Senate, by the way, Mark Meadows did speak with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell about a half an hour ago. He said, I don't know that today has to be the drop dead deadline to do a deal, but there are enough numbers and facts to have to discuss that hopefully it makes sense. It makes for a more meaningful conversation. So that's where things stand, everybody. I did this uh, one take video in 10 minutes. Uh, this is my, uh, my glass of wine because I want to cheer 
to you. I care for you all. I appreciate you. I'm working hard for you. I will always be there for you. And hopefully, hopefully, the government comes through for us. We'll find out. If they do, that's fantastic. If they don't, I'm going to do what I can to help you. In fact, if there's something specific you want me to do to help you, other than covering all this news, other than, uh, other than uh, sort of getting drunk, it takes a lot more to get me drunk, just so that you know. I could do two bottles of Moscato, no problem. I have a pretty high tolerance for alcohol. <laughs> but, uh, but tell me what else I can do to help you. I'm here for you. I'll continue covering the news. But more importantly, I'll take you on our next journey financially. Definitely check out the Financial Freedom Series. So, I'm going to enjoy this. Please click like. Please subscribe. Please enable notifications. It's your vote of confidence in me and my team. I appreciate you. I'm hoping to have positive news for you. Whatever it is, I will report back to you with the truth. Again, a one-take video. And I appreciate you all. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.